Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Welcome to Mike's Retro Tech and the Retro Loft. A couple of videos back I did a quick Einstein haul and in the photograph you saw the ZX Spectrum and the Interface 1. There is the ZX Spectrum. There was the accompanying microdrive. And out of my little box here, there is the Interface 1. Now what I didn't realise was the Interface 1 screws to the Spectrum. So that's a bit of a strange thing, but never had one before so I don't know. And then also there was the little dinky danky cable that goes between the microdrive and the Interface 1. So that's what came spectrum wise. Well, I think there was a, I think there was a, a bit of a shonky cable, but that wouldn't work because it's RCA. It's not, it's not aerial lead. So I've got one of these, which is great. So I don't need to buy, you know, don't need to buy anything else there for that. Um, when I've had a quick look at this, very quick look, the keyboard membrane broke. <coughs> so because of that. I've had to order a new keyboard membrane from eBay and it arrived, oh I don't know, it arrived three or four months ago so it's in, let me uh, sort this package out, it's in here so as you can see I ordered this at Christmas so it's got a nice Christmas stamp on it and I paid, let me have a see. I paid the glorious amount of seven pounds and 80 British pence for the keyboard membrane. There we go. So that's one bit that's been fixed. That's great. My next bit, let's have a see what we've got. Oh, there isn't really in there. Um, what there wasn't with this, there wasn't a power supply. So again, I went online and I bought from eBay a genuine ZX Spectrum power supply. So you can see, it fits nicely in there. And this was guaranteed working. And I think I paid, I don't know, about eight pounds for that, maybe. So that's the second component I needed. What I do need to do though really, is move everything to one side and then try and refurb this bad boy because this way, as you can see over here, well you can't see but over there on a previous video you saw the, the TV which was connected to the, um, the Atari ST. So I'll be able to connect the Spectrum up to this once, um, once I verify that, that it is working. Now it's very old as you know how old spectrums are but this particular model is so old that I just had to lift that like that and as you can see the there was no the, the, there was, there's, there's no sticky at all um, and looking at this now um, I'm gonna have to buy a new keyboard uh, rubber cap set you know a new one of these because I know that's cap shift and I know that's a one but it doesn't it doesn't look good does it so I'll clean that up as best I can and I will I will clean all this up and get some double-sided tape onto that eventually uh, and then this as you can see yeah um, it's just disintegrating it literally just fell apart in my hands when I tried it like really just gnarly uh, and the ends came off that that snapped off from there so really that is fairly useless um, I might keep it though just on the off chance that I mean you see the difference that way around there you go that's how they work yeah so new one old one horrible and yellow nice and clean and brand new Apologies for this low noise that you can hear in the background. There is a huge, great cement truck 
in the building yard behind the house and it's very noisy so there we go um right so what we can do let's have a look now zx spectrum personal computer and we have zero zero one yep uh, zero five two two seven five and i'm thinking that this is an issue one and it might even be a 16k model right, that's not going to work there is it so i need something bigger than that one of those maybe yeah there we go and the other thing to note is that it's missing feet so i'm gonna have to buy feet as well for it um yeah that's not a problem though feet are always good and easy to buy one thing i don't have though is i don't have a micro drive cassette to go in there so i don't know i think i have a feeling that the um the the what's it called the ribbon is going to be faulty on that and also there's no feet on there either and more than likely yes there's no feet on there so it looks like somebody um had a field day with the feet right and one more to go there and that's that so two long ones and a short one hmm. Okay, maybe that short one should have gone in the back. And then we lift off. And yes. Yes. Okay. So, as you can see, it's an issue 2 board. And it was a 16K Spectrum. And it's had, I believe, the 32K added to make it a 48K. Well, that's what I was told it was anyway, 48K Spectrum. It might not be. But, let's, uh, what have we got? Oh, yes, okay, so, one little screw there, in the middle. Move those to one side. And there we go and there's the residual end of the keyboard membrane and that's how much of it came off in the socket so that's why it really does need replacing okay I'm gonna have a quick look at this board now and I'm gonna change position because um, I'm a bit high up so give me a second and we'll get back to it and we'll do some diagnostics okay so the board we can see that is out of the case now and uh, from what I can tell online the this little cable here let's see if I can uh, get me yes this little cable here is connected to a diode which appears to be connected to a resistor under the, the heatsink and that is indicative of an issue 2 spectrum I believe so um, it looks like that was factory fitted and those have been fitted after the event. So this has been some sort of upgrade mod. And then there's been a fault where these have been replaced. Um, I've not got my multimeter out yet. I'm still waiting to see, uh, to find a video online which tells me exactly what I need to check for. But for the moment, when we look on the back, we can see that it's full of crap. And all these um, solder joints all the flux has started to come away and they've gone brown. So I'll use my trusty IPA, my isopropyl alcohol, at 99.9% concentration. And we'll run it across some of these, just like that, to see whether we can take some of the brown off. Standard fare to clean the motherboards this with the IPA, so I don't think I'm doing anything untoward. But I really want to get this working because on my shelf here I have a sweet talker and a spectrum and what else have I got? A Cora Micro Speech and what looks to be half of a Sinclair ZX Spectrum. Now I say half because I bought it 
with the sweet talker and it was like a bonus i bought the sweet talker and the um the printer came with it so i wasn't rightly bothered that it, it, it seemed to be missing something but um it's only when i've come to investigate properly that um i found that there is a, a back bit missing to the printer but we'll address that in another video so let's just uh, dry that off if we can Still all not come off, but it's better than it was. Yeah, it's definitely better than it was. I think I might have to just readdress those with my soldering iron. Now that after you saw in the previous video that the uh, soldering iron has now been fixed, yay! Which is great. Okay, um, what have we got then? Issue two, 1992. Sorry, 1982, not 92. Issue two, Sinclair ZX Spectrum, and the solder mask there, the, the trace cover, appears to have gone wrinkled. But looking at videos online, they all seem to have done that. I think it must be its age. Um, the interesting thing I've noticed is that the video I watched this morning was a 3B. And the 3B had the voltage regulator up here. So obviously the board was changed after the event to, um, I don't know, make it work differently or to, to fix it and to I don't know honestly I don't know it's um Sinclair Spectrums used to be my thing many years ago but then I fell not fell out with them but I upgraded to an Atari ST and very foolishly sold my old Sinclair Spectrum to the next door neighbour who I believe had it for another decade after I sold it to her so <clears throat> that's pretty good um yeah, so a lot of people got a lot of use out of that spectrum. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to be very brave and I'm going to connect this to the TV and I'm going to plug it in and I'm going to see what happens. It might go pop, in which case you will witness it going pop and it might work, in which case you will witness it working on the TV. A few moments later. Look. Look at the TV, it's working. Right, power supply plugged in. TV turned on. What I'm going to try and do now is see whether I can film using my phone at the same time. And you can see me plugging in the spectrum at the same time. I'm not sure you can. Yeah, maybe I can do it vertically. Sorry about the bird. No, no. Let's try it. How can I do this? Oh, will that work? Look, look at the TV, it's working. So that'll be a bit freaky, you can see yourself on the video. Oh well. Um, but yes, yeah, so power's in, TV is on. Now it looks a bit grainy, so I believe you can use VR2 and VR3 or VR1. And make it slightly better so let me right i'm going to use those two to try and make the tv signal a bit better no that's making it worse Oh, so's that. Okay. Let's try and get it as close as I can. Okay. There. Ooh. Oh no. Oh no. 
Yes. There we go. Excellent. So, hopefully I will have been able to put that picture in picture. Um, but yeah, thumbs up there. Thumbs up there. That's all working. I'm well impressed with that. So, essentially, that is a free Sinclair ZX Spectrum. Okay. So now what I need to do is I need to work out exactly how much memory is available. Um, uh, uh, yeah, there's no keyboard. Right, okay. Um, I'll connect it off everything back up to the, in the case and then plug it back in with the keyboard on and then we'll see whether we can actually type anything and whether the keyboard membrane is working. Right, I spoke too soon. It appears that it only powers on when I move the cable around. So it's either the socket or it's this cable here. And I think it's probably, actually, it might well be the cable within there. So I might have to get a replacement one of these, which I haven't got at the moment. So, but it does, it does work. You've got to just hold the cable at a certain angle. If I change the channel, it's back on again. I think it's this. Yes. It's definitely the socket because when I wiggle that left and right in the actual socket the signal goes off right good okay so at least I know what it is and I can fix it by desoldering and resoldering this so this is good so now I get to use my fixed soldering iron Roll my sleeves up because I'm in business. I'll bring that over to here. Plug him in. Get my forks. Get all my bits and bobs together. And then plug the bad boy in under the desk. Again, I use my uh, magnifying glass just to see what's going on. Oh, actually, it's quite corroded in there. Ah, so maybe it doesn't need a resolder. Maybe it just needs a bit of a clean in there. Uh, what have I got? Oh, yes, I've got some, got some sandpaper. Let's reapply some solder to that anyway, just to be on the safe side. Some flux on it. Just three blobs, that's all we need. Just the three blobs.
What's going on there with that? That can't be right, surely. to be. Okay. Let's try this again. It may not even be that. It may be something else. Power supply in there, TV turned on, TV turned on, yes TV turns on, and then Spectrum plugged in, and there we go. Ooh, it is quite bright though, that on the... Uh, do now is I'll put a snap in of the spectrum screen there we go to show that it's working right I'll unplug that now and I'll put it back in his box and then we can put the keyboard on and try to do some typing and we'll see how well this machine actually behaves Okay, so checking online again, I found another photograph. This is actually a 48K Spectrum issue two. Um, it looks like there is a modification here, which is right, which goes to the chips. And, or is it? Maybe not. It seems to go to a different pin. But these certainly were socketed and had the RAM installed. And these were unsocketed. Um, on the 16K, so I think this is an issue to 16K Spectrum that has been upgraded to 48K back in the day, which is probably right, um, although the lady that I got it off didn't know anything about it really, but it's definitely an issue to board, because I know it says it there, but the pictures correlate as well to make it, to, to show it is correct. Now, once I've got the keyboard on, I want to try some software. Now I have a Retroleum, I believe it's called, a OneBIS, I get my head in the way, I'm sorry. I've got a OneBIS interface card that fits in here that's got loads of software on, um, on SD card. So hopefully, hopefully we can use that and we'll be able to get some games running because it does work super de doo de well it's quite an impressive piece of kit and I might have to do a separate review of that another day but anyway I'm really impressed that this Spectrum is actually working I know the keyboard's grotty I know the keyboard's really grotty but that's something to deal with at a later date so, new keyboard goes in there, new keyboard goes in that side. You've got to love the old style push fits. And there you go. In there, that's right. Oh, nice. And then, where's the monkey keyboard? The monkey keyboard is here, it's so my side. And then I've got this here. So that is the Spectrum. 
Okay. So we'll plug it in. We'll turn on the TV. Yes or no? What channel are we on? 39? broken something no I've not broken something I'm being completely stupid I haven't got the aerial cable in so it does help when you've got the, ca the, the aerial cable in A few moments later. Okay, so I have a feeling, after trying many, many things, that this end piece here is knackered. So I'm going to chop it off, and I've got a similar end that I'm going to wire up so the white is positive and the black is negative. So positive, positive that side, negative that side. So it's probably a bad idea to do this, but. There you go, we've done it. It's uh, not something I like doing, but you know, it probably needs to be done. Brilliant. So, the proof of the pudding is in the tasting. So let's eat. No, seriously not. I just plug this in here. Plug that in there, turn my TV on. I'm going to film this on my, on my phone now, so I'll disconnect this camera. Nothing on the telly. go there is excellent right I fixed it it was that cable yes look look nice brilliant superb job done right reassemble it and try it again now okay so um, I can't remember cap shift one delete where's delete Wow, it's so long since I've used this keyboard. Backspace, is there no backspace? Wow. Oh, shift and F1. Uh, shift and one, there we go. So we can do J for load. We get load. We can do shift and two Ps. 
So symbol shift and two P's. Symbol shift and two P's. Excellent. So it is working. Now the question is, how many of these keys are going to actually work? So let's do that. And let's try all the keys in sequence. Oh. It seems to be working. I need to get my tripod. I'll do that to get a better image. Right, so the only way I can show this working is by putting it on my Atari ST on my on my phone. Um so if we do print, that's fine. Then we can do all the characters. There's actually no sound, so let's turn it up a bit if we can. Uh, volume. Oh, now I thought there was a click. So print, and then Q, W, E, R, T, Y, U, I, O, P. Because we're on the English keyboard. Then print A, S, D, F, G, H, J, K, L. Enter. Yep. Print Z, X, C, V, B, N, M. And a space. Okay. Then we can do shift. And all the shift characters yeah that looks like they're working fine brilliant so I think that is now I think that is working properly Billington whiz I do like a bit of that right so what we need to do is we need to try a game now I suppose or some application so I'll try and squirrel one out and see whether or not we can get one working <laughs> 